Let's learn how to use the Niagara Basics and C++ code in Unreal. So I've got two actors here. The yellow is code and the blue is blueprint. I haven't read the code yet, but to show you what we will be building, I've implemented it in blueprint first. And so as you run up close to this, it overlaps, plays a confetti particle. And if you keep overlapping, it doesn't play it until it's completely done. This is pretty straightforward in blueprint. There are a few more things you need to consider in code. But in Blueprint, I just have this active begin overlap, and I have a box collision that will be overlapped with the pawn. And so on active begin overlap, I just print that it was overlapped, and then I check is this an Niagara system component, which is a variable I have set up. If it's not valid, then we'll spawn one, set that component, and print that we spawned it. This function here is a Kismet function library, so the Niagara function library to spawn the particle effect, and it takes a Particle system and components attached to attach point name, some location, rotation, location type offsets, auto destroy, auto activate, pooling, and pre call check. Now I have auto destroy checked, so this will clean itself up when it's done. And that's just in this variable here, which is more of a data asset. So you can see here the data asset. And if that particle system is still valid, meaning it's not done yet, it just goes up here and prints that it's still valid. And so that's how I've done it in Blueprint. Now we want to do the same thing in code and see how to get that working. So what we will do is we'll go to the code class here. And right now it's just an empty actor. We have actor, begin play, tick. Hop over to begin play and you can see that it's doing basically nothing yet and tick is doing nothing yet. So the first thing we want to do is create an event for when we overlap. So in code, this is done by overriding virtual methods. So I will implement virtual methods and type overlap. Notify actor begin overlap. Now we have our overlap virtual. And I'll clean this up a little bit. We do not need the DLL specifiers here. So on the overlap, what we want to do is effectively spawn the particle system if it's not been spawned. Or if it has been spawned, do nothing and wait for it to finish. The component that actually is spawned on the actor, so an actor component, the component that's actually on the actor is a Niagara component. This is an actor component subclass. This one specifically is of the FX system component, which is a primitive component, which is a scene component, which is an actor component. So we have a Niagara component. Give it a name. And we want to expose this to Blueprint in some ways, but we're going to handle spawning it in code. So just make it so it's visible and readable, but not settable. So this is the component we spawn over in our overlap. We can say if, we can check that the component is valid. And you may be tempted to say does not equal no pointer here. For particles, we should actually try the is valid function. And I'll get into the why in a moment, but effectively when it cleans up, this active component may not yet be deleted from the garbage collector, but it is done with its particle system. And this will detect when the particle system is pending to be cleaned up and finished, even though the garbage collector hasn't got to it yet. So we check is valid. So if it's already valid, let's just print a message that it's already been created and do nothing effectively. However, if it's not valid, then we need to spawn it. Let's look at the node in Blueprint that was able to spawn a system. Spawn system attached. So I double click on that takes us to the code. So I'll just copy and paste this because it is a static function. You can see here that we can call from anywhere. So I'm going to paste that function here. And I'll just format this nicely so that we can populate the data. So the first argument is our actual Niagara system. So this is like the data asset that defines the particle. So we actually need to specify that. And we'll do that in the header. Call it Niagara System Asset. And we'll set this up so that Blueprint can define the data for us. And I made it so that it can be read in Blueprint scripts too, should that be necessary. So now that we've got this system asset, we'll provide that to the first argument. And for the second argument, it is the component to attach to. So I'll just set that to the root component for now. And we don't have an attach point, so I'll just say name none. 
Rotation is fine for it to be a zero vector. Same with rotation. The scale we want a one vector. For attached type, we will do the keep relative offset, which I believe is the default here. So yeah, the default is keep relative offset, and that's what I'll use. So for auto destroy, I had this checked to true because our particle system is like a confetti thing that shoots up and then it falls down and eventually disappears. So we want it to clean up when that's done, so I'll say true. The pooling method, we'll just put none for pooling for now. Auto activate, we do want it to auto activate. And for the pre call check, I'll say true because that was the default checked here. So we basically have the same settings that we have in Blueprint now. And this function here returns a Niagara component. So I'll delete that and we'll assign this to our Niagara active component so that on further overlaps, we don't continue to spawn the same thing. Now it would also be nice to log that we spawned it. So do another print. I'll fix my typos up here. So now we have it, if it's valid, then we're, we've already spawned it, so we'll just print it and say we're not spawning. But if it's not valid, that is it takes the else, we're gonna print that we are gonna attempt to spawn something, and then we call this node here to spawn a Niagara component on our actor, and we save that component so that we can check it if we do any more overlaps. Now to compare the is valid to the null pointer check, inside a tick, I'm gonna get both of those results. So is, so we'll say is a Niagara component not equal to null pointer. And then we'll do this value check. So now we have bool variables with both of those results. And we can print that to the string to kind of see the behavior as the particle finishes. OK, so we'll print out the null pointer result. So 0 means it is not valid. 1 means it is valid. And in this case, the is valid check. Again, 0 means it's not valid. 1 means it's valid because of these two checks over here. And we'll change the color of the print so that it will help show us when a transition happens. So if they're both valid, we'll print out green. So that's a linear color. I'll replace this, the variable. And if they're both valid, the print color will set that to green. So the problem situation, so the more precarious situation is sometimes is valid will return false, but this will return true because it hasn't garbage collected yet. And so if they're not both valid, then this one likely is false and this one is true. So I'll say if this one is true, then we'll set the print color to set the print color to be yellow. And the last thing is we want this to print at a high frequency, so I'll set this to a small number. Okay, so now we should be printing the state of the is valid and the Niagara null pointer check, the Niagara component null pointer check. So I've intentionally not included things except certain things so that we can compile this and go through all the issues and resolve them. Since with C++, we have to do other things like include and set up our modules and our dependencies. So what I'll do now is shut down the editor and we'll attempt to compile. All right, so now we have some compile errors here. Let's just work our way through it from the top. So U Niagara system undeclared identifier, that means we need to include it or for declare it. So over here, we will for declare it in the header. So I have a key bind, but we have set up class U Niagara system. So that's a for declaration. However, on the CPP file, I'm gonna go ahead and include it regardless of whether or not we actually access it directly here. We do just kind of pipe it through to this function here, but just to show how to include it, if I go to the definition, we can see that we're in Niagara system that H. And so I'll, I can see that that's under the source Niagara classes Niagara system. But if we look for examples for the Niagara system dot H, we can see how to include it. Looks like it's just Niagara system dot H. So we'll include that one. If we go back to our errors, we can see that the Kismet system library is not included. So I'll include that. So I've used my keybind, and it's not quite right. It did a relative path, so I will clean that up. Primarily just by searching for references there. Uh, it looks like we go up to the Kismet in this case. And if we go back to our errors and scroll down a bit, get a lot of the same ones. So let's just run this again and see where errors remain. Okay, so we have some more errors here. 
let's see what they are. So Niagara component is undeclared. So this is also a thing we want to forward declare in the header. So just forward declare it in the header. And then a CPP file, I'm going to show how to include this, even though we might can get by without technically including it. Here's my key bind. And again, it did a relative pass, so we'll just do a search for Niagara components. And it looks like that is, and it looks like we are able to just include the file, removing everything leading up to it. And then go back to the output. So we've got some more of that, so I'll just compile again and see what remains. Okay, so we have another compiler, so I know here. And if we look here, cannot open while nagrasystem.h. And if we look down here, it's actually talking about missing type specifiers in a generated CPP file. So this object must be initialized. And this is likely because we haven't set up our C++ module to use Niagara. So what we can do is set up our C++ module to be able to use these Niagara components because they are from a Niagara C++ module. So if we go up to the source file and then open up our build CS file, we can set here to use the Niagara module. And to find that name, I'll just hop over to the Niagara system header and open this up, start traveling up, working for the build CS. There's the Niagara build CS. And here it looks like it's just called Niagara. So I will add that to the private dependency names. And now we'll try compiling again. Looks like we have some new compile errors to go through. So this one is just a typo. I meant to type log temp. And the next one is it's not a valid class or namespace, which means it likely needs to be included. So I'll use my key bind. We have our relative path here. It likely it's all the way up to public. That's generally where it stops. So if we do a search for this and see some other examples, just including it like that. So I'll sort these real quick. And then we'll try compiling again. All right, some more compile errors. So we are missing a semicolon. That is likely just right there, since this is a function call. And we'll try again. And it looks like it compiled successfully this time. Let's wait on the editor to initialize. So now we're back in the editor. If we go back to our code one, we should have new properties here. So we have this Niagara system asset. And all that is is a Niagara system here. I created that like right click Niagara system and selected the confetti burst. And just to go inside of that, there is a Niagara emitter inside of this system. And the system is kind of like the data asset portion of this. So if we go to that, so if you want to learn more about Niagara, there's plenty of blueprint tutorials on that. This is mostly just showing how to interface with it. So we have this Niagara system asset where we can provide a Niagara system. And I'll go to the content browser, select that, and then tell it to use it. So now we have the confetti burst. Compile that and we can test this out. Now I have it on net mode play as client so that we can see a dedicated server and client spin up. And if I play, before we walk into the overlap, you can see there is a constant stream of prints at the top. So no pointer check and it's valid check. So let's test it out. So we'll walk over and overlap. Now I saw a little bit of confetti down at his feet. Now you can see at the top, it was green. It had a null pointer check being valid and is valid check being valid, but now it's yellow. The null pointer check still shows one, but the is valid check is showing zero. So if I hop over to the tick, what we can do is just drop a breakpoint here. So if we drop a breakpoint here, we can see that both results are false. So this is likely on the dedicated server. Now this must be on the dedicated server because the dedicated server doesn't actually spawn the particle system here. It only spawns the particle system on the client. So if I paste the little helper to tell us the context stream, it tells us that is the dedicated server. That is just what you see here. Unreal editor engine DLL G play and editor context stream. And so if I continue, we should hit the client. So now we're on the client, we run both the checks and we see that the null pointer is still true. So this thing hasn't been garbage collected yet and the is valid check is false, meaning this thing has finished, but it's no longer showing or displaying. It's been marked for garbage, most likely. So this is probably the number one mistake when first using Niagara systems in code, is that instead of using the proper is valid check, so instead of using this, you accidentally use the null pointer check. So this is probably the most common mistake, is that instead of using is valid checks, you use a does not equal null pointer check. In the case of particles, it may be set to auto-destroy, you want to use this valid because the particle system may be done and you might want to spawn another one. 
so the particle system might be done and you want to spawn another one or do some other type of check. So just in default with using particles, I would use is valid. So if I disable this breakpoint and continue, so now the garbage prepares run and everything is invalid. But if we go up to this, now it's green. If I drop a breakpoint quickly, hopefully we can catch where both of these are in the state of true. So we are on the server again, so it didn't spawn the system. But if I continue on the client, step over, we can see that it is true for both of these. I'll disable that. So I'll disable that and hop back over here. And you can see if I go back and overlap, it spawned again, even though there was still technically a, a valid pointer there. So let's wait for it. Now it's no longer valid, but there's still a valid pointer, and it should just spawn a, another system right away, even though the pointer was still not a pointer. And it spawned a system right away because the is valid check was false, but the no pointer check was still true. So it didn't really care about no pointer because we had used is valid in our code. So by that, I just mean we used an is valid check here. So that is the basics of how to use the Niagara module in C++. You use is valid checks to make sure it's not destroyed from this auto destroy or some other thing, marking it pending destroy. It's just better practice in general to use this valid because it detects things like is the part of the system trying to clean up a lot earlier than a null pointer check because you can't guarantee when the garbage collector is going to run. You have to set up your modules in your either your private dependency modules or public dependency modules. And the module for Niagara is called Niagara. And it seems that if you try and spawn a Niagara system on the server using that particular node, it does not. It does spawn it on the client. As you can see from here, the server is zero for everything, and the client has one for everything after it initially spawned. And now we can see this valid check because the particle system finished is now zero, but it still hasn't been garbage collected, so the no point check is still one. And if I force the GC to run, we can see that it immediately cleared out the pointer. So that's the basics. I hope that helped. If you have any questions or comments or corrections, then leave them in the comment section below. And until next time.